Okay, the next thing we're going to be talking about is surface of revolution. So it's like surface area. Um, in geometry, we would have that. That's We've worked on volume of these shapes. Now we're going to just do the surface area of this piece, which um, by definition here, you can see that it's 2 pi times the radius, and then this is our slant height. This is what we were working with earlier, the arc length from one point to another. Okay, the textbook mentions here um, that if the f is negative for some x in the given interval, then you can just take the absolute value, and it's just an extension of the previous one. We also want to um, have integration with respect to y, so it's 2 pi g, g of y, and then every all the variables change, and of course the intervals change to y var variables as well. Okay, so basically we're just given this definition of surface area. And um, also, these were our given formulas, but we're also, sometimes there's more notation on both formulas. They can be summarized symbolically um, using the DS, which is going to be our, um, this is our differentials of our R length function, and this is in your a theorem in your textbook, but first of all, it's just saying if your ds is 1 plus f prime of x squared, you can see this looks very familiar. This is with rotation about the x-axis, and this is um, just rotation about the y-axis, then it's defined in that way, such that um, our differential of the arc length function is represented in that way. So. Just so you see the, just the two different notations. This is the one I'm giving to you in the formula on the first page. This is rotation about the x-axis. Let me just flip back there. That's right here. Okay, and then this is the one with respect to y. I'm going to rewrite this one and this one using a ds notation. Okay, and I told you, remember, ds is denoted as this. Okay, so first of all, let's just see this. It's not it's not too bad. So 2 pi is 2 pi. F of x means the same thing as y equals, right? So that's not anything too bad. We can see why we could replace that with that. And this can be replaced with ds because we tell you here that ds is this value and ds is this value. Now we do that because we just calculated this. We just did some work practice and calculating that. So... For the rotation about the y-axis, looks like the y is missing dy. Your 2 pi is just 2 pi. g of y is the same thing as an x equals. Remember, we solved those for x equals. And then this is ds, but with respect to y. So all they're saying is sometimes this is a little bit more simplified version of the previous one. One's ds form, and the other is just our definition form that was given. Um, just so that you're familiar with either notation in case the textbook sometimes ask a homework question with DS or the regular notation. Okay, so now we're going to find the surface area and I actually work through this entire problem so I can spend a little bit of time explaining some things to you. I'm given y equals this function and I'm telling the interval from negative 2 to 2 and it's about the x-axis. So I went ahead and used this formula, which is a simplified version. Um, that's for this one, okay? If you prefer this one, then that's fine. Either one that you can prefer, but you can see that this one's a little bit easier to remember than this one. So I started with this. So I brought down 2 pi. Now my interval are from for the x values are from negative 2 to 2. 2 pi y equals, well y equals this value, so I plugged in that for my y equals, and then ds. Now ds is what I'm going to have to go to the side and really do all the scratch work for. So the first thing, to get ds, I have 1 plus, my ds, 1 plus the first derivative of x squared dx. This is what we were calculating earlier in today's lesson. So I need to go, first of all, find the first derivative and then calculate this to find ds. So you can see over here, the first thing I'm going to do is work on the first derivative. So y equals 9 minus x squared to the 1 half power. Taking the derivative of that, I have 1 half out front 
to the negative one half power. Now, don't forget, you have to do the derivative of this inside, which is negative two x. Now, this negative two and this one half simplify so that I just have nine minus x squared to the negative one half times negative x. Okay, and then I just rewrote it to have a positive exponent. All of that was just to find my first derivative. Okay, now I plug that first derivative that I got right here into my ds formula, and now I want to square it. Negative x times negative x is positive x squared, and then a square undoes a square root, so I just have 9 minus x squared in the bottom. Okay, algebraically, I want to put these over the same common denominator, so that would just give me 9 minus x squared plus x squared, which then I simplify the top, and I just get 9 over my common denominator. Square root of 9 is 3, and this is just left under the square root, dx. So this is my ds. So now I come back in place of ds, I plug that value in, and a real nice thing happens. So this term will cancel with this term, and we're just left with 2 pi times 3 dx. Well, that simplifies to 6 pi dx, and this is very nice for us to evaluate. And now we're just going to, I'm going to pull the 6 pi out, and then we evaluate x from negative 2 to 2, and the surface area is just going to be 24 pi units squared.